Today, at least 11 people have been killed and four others injured after an attack on a shopping mall in Mogadishu, Somalia. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but Mogadishu is frequently targeted by Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab. Plumes of smoke billow in the air in Mogadishu, seeming like another terror attack early on Monday morning. A huge blast was heard in the heart of the Somali capital, in the Hamarwain district, a busy area with shops and restaurants. Four cars have been burnt and a restaurant was destroyed. Police say the death toll would likely rise. It's unclear what caused the explosion. But Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab frequently carries out bombings in Mogadishu and other parts of Somalia against government military and other targets. The group is trying to remove the Western-backed central government and establish its own rule based on its strict interpretation of Sharia law. Al-Shabaab militants also carry out attacks outside Somalia, especially in Kenya, to pressure the country to return its troops who form part of the peacekeeping force Amisim that helps defend the central government. Its latest assault in Kenya, a suicide and gun attack at an office and hotel complex in the capital Nairobi last month, killed 21 people. Joining us now is a security expert, Chidi Nwanu, to discuss the increased activities of Al-Shabaab in Somalia. Hello, Chidi. Hey, good evening. Thanks for having me. Al-Shabaab is still a major threat in Somalia. Hardly a week goes by without an attack. But why have we seen a rise in attacks in Mogadishu by Al-Shabaab? Well, when you uh, look at uh, Al-Shabaab's attack, we have to take into the context of all the things that are happening in Somalia. It's not just Al-Shabaab, but you know, in terms of government forces and U.S. intervention. So you have the U.S. conducting much more aggressive airstrikes, much more aggressive you know, special forces attacks on Al-Shabaab. At the same time, you know, you've got the Kenyan forces, you've got Ethiopians, and you've got uh, the Somali federal government um, attacking uh, Al-Shabaab quite aggressively. It is, and also, as another adjunct to that, Al-Shabaab is you know, engaged in a fratricidal war with Islamic State. So Al-Shabaab is under pressure from a lot of different angles. So when you look at these uh, attacks, you know, from Kenya to Morgan issue, some of them can be considered to be, you know, retaliatory attacks, and often can prove to their adversary that they're fighting and they have capabilities beyond their, their own territory. Oh, Chidi, as a security expert, how difficult would you say it is to get rid of a militant group such as Al-Shabaab? Well, it's exceptionally difficult. I mean, the, the, the first thing you want to do is make sure groups like this don't form in the first place. And if they do form, they don't take up arms. Because now that they've formed and they've managed to survive the first stage, which is, you know, the always the most difficult stage, is that they're more or less entrenched in society. So even if you eliminate, you know, most of their forces, most of their fighters, there will always still be at least a hardcore out there who are willing to engage in these kind of, you know, suicide attacks and, and cause mass casualties. Even if it's just one a year, that's still one too many. It's a very difficult proposition, but not 100% impossible. It just takes a long time and a lot of effort. Well, over the past year, we've seen the U.S. President Donald Trump in office and the U.S. has carried out airstrikes, it's increased in the country, and there have been notable achievements. But are these airstrikes making the necessary impact? Well, the airstrikes are very, uh, very important in, in several ways. And the first is that obviously they're causing a significant attrition of Al-Shabaab's uh, resources and Al-Shabaab's manpower. And they also, there was a demonstration that the Somali government had outside support that outside support is, uh, is not going away. But the second thing is that we don't actually know what toll these uh, airstrikes take on the Somali people uh, you know, in terms of collateral damage. Because the uh, AFRICOM and the, the various you know, Af uh, SUs who are in there have not released in details of uh, civilian casualties. So it's not known how many civilian casualties are due. It's not known how this affects, you know, the uh, view of the Somali people towards, you know, the Somali federal government in the United States or, or other forms of health. But obviously, it's, it is not a positive thing. But more importantly, for those airstrikes, you know, represent to out of a constant, you know, um, unrelenting, unrelenting pressure which they have to deal with. Well, we've seen the presence of different terrorist groups in Africa, in Mali, Boko Haram in Nigeria, and Al-Shabaab in Somalia. Well, what is their mission and how can they be stopped from achieving it? 
Well, all of them have one thing in common, which is that they generally espouse a form of uh, Wahhabi, uh, Salafist, Jihadi uh, ideology. But if you take away that common factor, almost all of them have, you know, a local kind of uh, impetus. So Al Shabaab came out from the breakdown or the end of, you know, government in Somalia, the long Somali civil war, and it became, you know, it was one of the, the factors or one of the facets of the end of that war was the Islamic courts, which then bred Al Shabaab. In Nigeria, Boko Haram can be traced to, you know, poor governance, poor education, and in a very deprived part of Nigeria. Same thing in the Sahel. If you look at, you know, groups like JNIM, uh, groups like um, AQIM, they come out of, you know, the lawlessness and underdevelopment of the Sahel. So whilst they might all have a global kind of ideology, the most fundamental problems are local. They are failures of local governments, of the national governments, to address their people's problems. Mm, Chidi, just finally, since 9-11, can we say the fight against terrorism has changed? Yes, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the easy answer. It's changed. But I wouldn't say, you know, it changes. It's, it's maybe other word I would use. I'll say it's evolved. So if you've evolved from groups like outside, which are really kind of, I would say, old fashioned, they have commands, which is somebody at this point is uh, giving orders, you know, everything is that. They've not got what's essentially franchised. So again, using Nigeria as an example, what was my opinion? But it comes to the these are not set by coming to the you know, Iraq or Syria. There. These are local people who take the Islamic State's mantle. So it's, it's now become a more franchised, you know, uh, now with the attitude of the internet yeah. and you know, the, the history of the wars in the Middle East and in Afghanistan, you know, there's a lot more experience, a lot more conflict people. Yeah. Have really Seems seems we do apologize for the poor audio quality there, but uh, security expert, Chidin Wanu, thank you for joining us on Network Africa.